Hi guys, my name is Gerald from Trading Waves. Welcome to today's short video. In today's short video, unlike uh, we traditionally do, we take at a couple of pairs today. And I have about five to six pairs that I want us to take a look at. We don't take a look at uh, um, the entire picture, but just to, to demonstrate the power of the wave theory itself, how we apply it and how accurate it has been for us. Right now, let's start with Audi New Zealand, right? I'm just going to show you what we forecasted before on Audi New Zealand and what we have currently. On Audi New Zealand, uh, we propose that we are within wave four. This was on the 9th of August, today being the 18th of August, right? We propose that we are going to get this move to the downside, although the labeling was a bit different from what you see currently on the chart. But what we proposed was that um, from here, we should be getting a move to the downside there. Why do we say that? We look at structure. Very, very crucial. We look at structure. And the structure will have sequences. We'll have a structure that has... Um, or that which has a specific expectation. For example, if you are within an impulse as a structure itself, if you get one, two, and you are certain that that's one and that's two, you'd expect an acceleration in three. So the structure within three would be expected to be an impulse, right? Not a diagonal. Now, because we understand structures or market structures and formations or forms, we, we expected that from here, we should, instead of getting a continuation to the upside, we should be getting a move to the downside to complete this as a structure. You'll see now on the real chart that this is three, this is four, and we're looking for more upside. So the labeling does not affect the structure at all. Instead, the structure almost dictates what the labeling should become. Okay, let's quickly take a look at, that's Audi New Zealand. That was the one hourly. And at the time we were here, about here, right? This, this is what had formed. And we are getting that move to the downside. We're expecting a regular flat. And as you can see now, this is three, that's four. Though the labeling has been adjusted, the structure has not been adjusted. That's Audi New Zealand there. The forecast on the structure playing out quite well as one way to demonstrate the power of the wave theory. Right? We have here Euro Audi. Right? From this low here, you can see this is wave one in yellow. From that low there, we have a W, which was comprising or is comprised of three waves, W, X, Y. Within X, we expected that the fifth wave would terminate at around this area or at least above that invalidation level there. And because we understand the sequence that if we have a W, X, what should follow is a Y, right? A Y higher. Now that's a sequence, but we expected the structure to end before it uh, touches or gets nearer to the invalidation level. And that's Euro Audi. Let's take a look at the live chart now. What happened? exactly what we had forecasted. And here, the demonstration of understanding of structure and sequence. We understand that W, X, when X completes, you should be getting a Y following an X. So we understand the sequence and we understand how the structure should play itself out as an ABC expanding flat corrective structure mm -hmm. in Elliott wave terms within wave X in there. Um, red degree. It's the same thing that which we had, or a similar thing that which we had expected on Euro New Zealand, right? Euro New Zealand, we had expected that we would get from the lows of A, a W in red, and then an X once again as an expanding flat corrective structure, especially because Euro New Zealand and Euro Audi are pretty much directly correlated as sister pairs. So we're expecting that from this low, we should be getting upside. But look at how sharp this move is. If you are looking at this move alone from that peak there, you probably would have said, 
this must be a one, this must be a two, even as a wave trader, and this should be a three to the downside. And therefore, you would have expected some continuation pattern or a continuation without any pause lower from there. But as I said, we understand the structure and the sequence. No matter how sharp this looks, we understood that this is the sharp move, which should be the fifth wave of the C wave within X in red. And we should be seeing a bounce higher, no matter how sharp this looks. A bounce higher, whilst price remains above that level there. A similar principle that we applied on Euro Audi, we had applied on Euro New Zealand. And as you can see, we have gotten that move to the upside there. That looks sharp indeed, but we knew that the sharpness does not really uh, mean much because we understand the sequence within which we are of this leg. So we had one, two, three, four. This sharpness is just the fifth wave and we should be seeing a move to the upside there. That's Euro New Zealand. Pound Audi. On Pound Audi, this is a, a, a bit more interesting. So one, one, if one follows Elliott wave sequence, you'd see that we have our wave one here, right? In green. And then we have one, two, three. Could this be two? Too shallow, right? Too shallow to be two. What could it be? Right, we thought it, it would be a W. And we thought this would be an X. And then we we're expecting a, a Y higher, but that didn't happen. Instead, it gave us something like this. At this stage, when it was here, we thought this would be the X in purple here and we'd be seeing a move higher, but it didn't do that. It gave us a move lower. Even when it did, we still expected that this move is part of X and we should be getting a move higher. Why? Because we thought this would be too shallow to be a two. That did not go above that peak there. So it it's, it was at, the, at this stage still very likely part of a corrective structure within two itself. And in this case, that corrective structure was X in purple. Even though this law is lower than that one. And even though this law is much lower than that one, we still expected that from about here, we should be getting a move to the upside and get, we're going to eventually get either a running or an, an expanding flat correction. If this price keeps going higher, breaks above this peak, then it's going to be an expanding flat. But if it doesn't break above that peak, it's likely going to be a running flat lower within wave two. Why? Even why do we focus more upside, even though this has broken below that and that has broken that low there is below this. The reason why we focused upside is because we are not yet happy with the distribution of or the size of wave two. In terms of the sequences, wave two should have its own sequences that make Elliott wave sense. Right, so we couldn't say two is completed. And that's why from here, <clears throat> once again, no matter how sharp this looks, <clears throat> we thought it should give us a bounce soon from about that level there. That was a forecast on the 18th of August. That's Pound Audi. Let's look at the live chat on Pound Audi. Indeed, we did get that move to the upside and we expect continuation to the upside. And this we expect to be the last leg within wave two itself. No matter how sharp this looked, we still looked for that move to the upside. So this now is making to us Elliott wave sense. The sequence makes Elliott wave sense. Similar to what we expected on Pound New Zealand, <clears throat> which is a sister pair to Pound Audi. No matter how sharp this looked, we expected a move to the upside, right? And needless to say, one can see that on the live chat, we indeed have what we expected. And very nicely staying above the invalidation level. Right? And the invalidation level on Pound New Zealand was because or was placed as a result that wave none of these moves had broken below the law of wave one yet. And we said for as long as price stays above this level, we should be seeing upside to complete our wave two. So there's also an element of correlation that which we use when we do our forecast.
identified. Lastly, New Zealand Swiss franc. This one is a very straightforward uh, forecast where we expected price to reach the blue box area there and continue lower there. Very, very straightforward. <clears throat> and that's what we have on New Zealand Swiss franc on the one hourly time frame. Indeed, price went and kissed the blue box as expected. And now when we can all see that it's going down as we had expected. Already our members sold here. They are well within profits and we well within profits and they're running risk-free trades. We'll just be looking to add positions on this specific instrument there. Right? So if one wants to know how we do our thing, how we arrive at this forecast and conclusions, these correlations, the structures and sequences or Elliott wave sense and bring, putting everything together, I would implore you or invite you to <clears throat> take advantage of our 30% special that which is of the full cost that's starting in a few weeks time um, that is on the 5th of September. And we hope that uh, by joining our family, uh, that would help you become a better trader and we will be looking forward to welcoming you welcoming you on board cheers <laughs>